Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Re The Story Matters and Raising Our Gifted Children. This is one topic that actually had to be on both genres, and you'll understand why as we go through this wonderful story today. Uh, welcome to selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm the host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Stephen Gillen. What a life this man has had, and you'll understand why it had to go under the children's stories as well. Um, Abandoned by his mother, virtually at birth, raised by an aunt and uncles. Aunt dies, um, uncles don't think they can raise him, send him off to a home in the UK. He went to Belfast to be raised by them. And uh, subsequently, the turmoil, the roller coaster that he went through at various kind of foster homes and the life that it led to, to violence. Uh, he was at one point Britain's most dangerous criminal, but he is now reformed. He's an entrepreneur, he's a philanthropist. He's the Secretary General, um, he was nominated by the Secretary General of the Universal Peace Federation and the UK Peace Ambassador. And you know what, this just shows you that, that how we bring up our children, how we nurture them, uh, how we invest in them will lead them down the possibilities in life and that when you keep tossing them from one family to another that they are going to get lost somewhere along the line and what's waiting for them out there crime and this is a a real story um of passion of crime of reform and but finally finding his real voice finding his meaningful purpose uh, finding the direction that he really needed to go in uh, it's a very brave story i always admire people who are willing to talk about their tumultuous past and own it but show how it's brought them to where they are today doing what they're doing so hold on folks uh let's talk to stephen gillen and you, I'm halfway through the book, Stephen, and I'm I'm exhausted by reading it of all the, the the homes that you've been in, the the journeys that you've taken, the the in and out of Boston, and and uh, the constantly kind of on the run and mistrusting people. Uh, this is no way for a child to grow up. Welcome to the show, love. Hi, hi, Sarah. Thank you, thank you for having me, and. Um... Absolutely, it's not. You know, this book is is uh, all over the press. You know, it's made uh, international press. It's um, it's getting unbelievable traction because of the content and the uh, and the uniqueness of of the extremities of the two opposites. You know, to have overcome and been cast adrift into so much so much turmoil from from a civil war in Belfast to to this tumultuous, as you said, having to navigate this, this, th th these uh, real tough, tough challenges all the way through. But to you know, to have the courage and and the opportunity and the circumstance to find my way back to myself is mm -hmm. is the thing. And um, you know, to go on to be a, a peace ambassador, to be a successful entrepreneur in a few industries, to um, uh, to have a film, of course, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, bi a big budget film. Uh, we have the screenplay now, which we're working on, which is going to be adapted from the book, from the book, The Monkey Puzzle Tree. It's a real, it's a real privilege. And, you know, I'm very honoured. I mean, for me to bring it back, the important thing was the authenticity of the story, because there are bits of us scattered everywhere in it, Sarah. Yeah, there are. And, um, I have a series called the Forgotten Children series, and we're about to go into podcast books and in, in developing that. And, you know, from doing all the stories that I have done on, on people's trauma, tumultuousness, um, the, the wrong paths that they've taken, it always stems back to the childhood. 
And, you know, we do not invest in our children. We toss our children out. We pass our children on. And if we nurtured and believed and, and really watered the seeds in our children, we would see a less dysfunctional society out there. And you, you were so loved by your aunt and your uncles. And then suddenly to go from that love, you know, I mean, let's not uh, forget the scene of watching somebody die right in front of you while there's gunfire, go gunfire going off all around you and, and um, uh, not bombs, but, you know, fire going off everywhere. And there you are, you know, hiding in the bushes, watching this guy die in front of you. And you didn't tell anyone, you know, too scared to even tell anyone. All of this layer of, of trauma that is building up in your psyche. And then from that security of that home, you know, you're now taken back to London and uh, there goes your journey of up and down, up and down from various homes and introduction to, to crime. And it's what would have, you know, have you ever thought about what if I'd stayed with my uncles? This is, this is wonderful, you know, and, you know, you've really given so much, so much wisdom there. And, you know, this is uh, also a, a big reason why certainly I have, you know, and the people around me, the, the wonderful people I'm blessed to have in my life. We have uh, developed into doing now the Stephen Gillen Foundation. Mm. The three initiatives under the, under the umbrella are to support um uh, educate and empower disadvantaged youth, single parent families, the root of it, and entrepreneurship to, to, because uh, these are very cohesive together. And it's about having the, the, the tangible opportunities to step forward with all the opportunities to engage, to develop into a person who can take their, their own honest, healthy destiny in their own hands, which is a giving one not a consuming one, yeah. right? You see, and what the, certainly, I mean, the science proves it in a, you know, in our first seven formative years are pretty much where our personalities uh, yes. intrinsically are formed. You know, it, it, uh, the drivers are going to drive our adult behavior from then pretty much onwards, but we're pretty much formed. And this is, what you know, I've been interviewed so much on this, and of course, the question is always is what was the epiphany? What mm. was the new Rico moment? What's the middle bit? And of course, there were many. This right. is a process. Yes, yes. this it's is a not chapter, only it's literally 30 chapters years in your life, and, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 20 years of organized crime where I'm walking into people's uh, places, you know, I don't even know where I'm walking out I didn't just arrive there right. you know I was given wonderful instruction by by the people who, who was around me who brought me up in them formative years so I always had the heart qualities mm. I was always it's a very very interesting study but uh with provenance you know because it shows you that we can be anything that we want to be we are creating our own realities but how we're programmed and the people places and things that we're influenced in and have to uh, overcome really and the choices that shape us in these years really send us on the trajectory of what so much more that is to come but that can really be anything yeah it can be you know we're, we're very reactionary and influence you know influenced people so we're influenced by uh, what is around us uh, we're influenced by what happens to us we're very reactionary to what happens to us and if we're not taught skills and how to deal with things then it's either going to go internally and come out as anger or as sickness um it most certainly, you know, a disconnect from the inside. It most certainly is going to come out in some way. And uh, the, the seeding and the watering of, of a child is so very important because uh, uh, the first programming you want to do in there is love. Love, kindness, Absolutely. caring, you know, let the child Absolutely. know they're loved. You might not always approve of their actions and you hold them accountable for the action, but you never say, well, I don't love you anymore because of it, because a child needs that love. And you had it at first, which I think became your heart foundation, which I think for you very much later on is what called upon you to say, 
change directions because the heart was very much nurtured there. Uh, but the fact that, you know, you, you were in this home, you had one home that you really did enjoy and you had to leave it and you had other homes not. But there's something very, um, a thread in there, uh, the inability to eat. Now, I haven't got to anywhere in the book whether this was a physical thing or whether this was an emotional thing, because you seem to have difficulty in eating. What was that? Yeah, this was, looking back with hindsight, these are very, very pivotal times, you know, to narrow it. You see, at that age, certainly, I mean, human beings, really anyway, but certainly at that age, in we're very susceptible yes. to many many things and many influences you know, we don't have the skills and the knowledge or the right. experience of life to be able to deduce what what would be the best choices certainly or the best way to go in so many things we're really an open book so you know you put the trauma of you know watching people die in front of me i mean that person who was shot in front of me you know they died in front of me calling for their mother i was seven uh, years old i had to watch yeah. that yeah, that changed everything for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it really the world became full of shadows then, even though I didn't really understand yeah. what this was about. But we carry this stuff and it is, you know, it does layer in us because, you know, we're very present in the energies of these actions. And when these mm -hmm. things are happening, mm -hmm. it, it's it's, uh, you know, it's like a sponge. It's really clean. But once you get a certain dye into it, you can never absolutely get that dye yeah. out, no matter how much you wash it. There will mm. be some, some tiny remnants of that. It's this kind of thing. And um, so, you know, then my uh, surrogate mother, who, you know, was my world at that point, you mm -hmm. know, she died, unfortunately, of very, very aggressive cancer. So I was thrust into a really alien situation in an alien place. I spoke funny. Mm -hmm. You know, everything was alien. I, you know, I was a very, very anxious child at that point. And for us, we, you know, we want to belong. We want to be needed. We want to be useful. We want to be loved. Mm -hmm. So there's all this. For, so we, so I went on really to, which was really, really obvious and predictable to form my own, try and form my own family groups and relationships, mm -hmm. which were not that healthy for me at that point. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you never know um, where you're going to be placed or with home and the influence it's going to have. Should, had you been in a different household, would you have taken those paths? And, but, you know, I also believe that kind of before we come here, we, you know, we, we kind of lay down our blueprint. We're here to have this experience. And, uh, you know, in the human side of it is discover our strength, our courage, our abilities, and our meaningful purpose. And, had you not gone through such a tumultuous upbringing and gone down this road of crime, being chased by the cops, you know, obviously being beaten up. Um, I don't know if you've been shot at, um, as I said, of only halfway through the book right now, um, you know, carrying a gun for your own security. Um, it, it's the strength and the courage to say no more. Now, as you said, there is moments here where you wanted to walk away and drawn back in. You're in Boston, you're in jail. Each time you're not going to come back out, you're going to want to go back into crime. But if that's all you know, if that's your world, and, and, and we know with the criminal world, you know, in many ways, it's your family, isn't it? They're, you know, they're your brothers and sisters because you don't have that other family to turn to. You can't help but go back to what you know. But as you learn to know more, and know better, that's when you could start making decisions to change and pivot in a different direction. So as you said, it wasn't one epiphany. It probably was, you know, um, several little chapters in your life where enough of this, I want to change. And maybe it didn't change immediately, but just a little shift to the left and a little shift to the right. Is that how it happened for you? Um, yeah, I mean, you're talking about levels and stages certainly if you want to call it chapters it's it's kind of you look you know you're 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 you know survival is the first thing mm -hmm. but really the 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 main part about growing into that life and being involved and integrated into them circles is in many ways I was groomed I mm -hmm. really was mm -hmm. you, you know you are you know it's you know you're groomed criminal. by the older ones you're just yes. happy to be around them yep. they're the ones there's the peer pressure but 
They're the role models. They're the ones you aspire to be. You yes. know, they are. They're the yes. ones who are very cool and doing all the stuff that you think it's all right to do. And this is what we do when we get to their age. And But we do, you know, all of this kind of stuff. And you're getting and, the attention that you're not getting elsewhere. Yeah, you know, and then you've got that survival and that protection thing. And there is a kind of, a, of course, there is a kind of a bond within mm. any groups of human beings, you know, and there is a, you know, a very kind of a tight bond. But that's part of the grooming process in a mm. way mm. that you're very, very integrated. You, you know, you're very insular in we do this and everyone else does something else kind of a thing, which, of course, is very, very unhealthy. This is the complete opposite of what you should be being told that, you know, we are a collective. It's, mm. you know, it's the wrong thing that they keep dividing everyone and pigeonholing yeah. everyone and saying, you know, we can do that forever when actually the power is we are a collective. We have our own journey and our own natures, our own frameworks, our own codes, our own agreements with up above, which we have certainly, right. certainly forged for whatever reason. But, you know, we have to overcome this in this in this life cycle. I mean, I've had many people. It's the lessons, isn't it? Yes, Sarah? it is. The learning okay. is, the, is the prerequisite of, of all of it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, everybody in life has gone through something. You know, we all go through some ups and downs. We've all got to face challenges. Some people get the cosmic two by four. Some yeah. people, it's just a mere tap on the shoulder. But we're all here to learn that strength, that courage, that ability, and that meaningful purpose. What are we here to do? How are we here to serve one another? And, you know, young people they just want to fit in. They just want to belong. And if you've got somebody, uh, you know, as you said, ready, oh, he's ripe for grooming. Right. He's really got no one to be accountable for, no family out there. Uh, he's looking to to belong somewhere. This is perfect, perfect candidate. And uh, it's it's a recipe for disaster. But at the time, one doesn't see that. Do you? you just see this is a place to belong. Absolutely. And the sad, the sad part of this story is that for you know i overcome so many things that people don't come back from i had addiction mm -hmm. problems sarah i'm mm -hmm. 12 years clean now i mm -hmm. was plagued with that it was like an evil spirit literally yes. this is a terrible thing yes right and um the criminality the, yeah. the you know the trauma the homes the living through the civil war mm -hmm. you know the seeing all this stuff the being part of all the suspicion and you have to watch where you go what you say who you mm. talk to who's listening all of this programming, all of this stuff, mm -hmm. all the years in high security prison, you know, all the violence, you know, I see unspeakable things, unspeakable yeah. things. And, but the sad fact is that these are really deep traps. So many people that venture anywhere near these waterholes, they never usually come back right. for obvious reasons, yeah. right? You see, and I'm a very grateful person. I'm a very, I'm a very grounded person. I, I, um, I'm a very courageous person. You know, I have very clear, clear ideas about things. And, um, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm, my cornerstone has always been gratitude, even now in what I do. And when the lights, when the lights come on, I, I never stopped going forward to make things better with, with an unbelievable drive. And, and, you know, this is why, we're lucky enough to be able to achieve a lot of the stuff. Right. Yeah. And the that, that's that's around me. your saving, saving grace, wasn't it? Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, I mean, it's a fact. I wouldn't be where I was if mm. it hadn't have been of where I had been. Yes. You know, and we are accountable for our actions. So oh, you yeah. have to be, because yeah. this is the point of learning mm -hmm. that we fall down, but that we get up and we learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some people fall a lot harder and a lot further than others. Or it's or just more the often. way it is. <laughs> Yes. Well, it's not a blaming thing, is it? You know. I mean, look, look, yeah, you know, I mean, we definitely need to be accountable and, uh, you know, all of this stuff. I mean, anything I've done, I mean, I paid for twice. Mm -hmm. So should I have done? Yes. I mean, this is a good karma. You know, this, mm -hmm. you know, there is a, a, a duality, a balance here. This is the difference about, you know, and it's so beautifully woven. You know, we've only got to open our eyes and look around or think about the the the, the tracks of our life that 
what we put out, but we certainly get back. Yes. Maybe not in the same format. But it's that boomerang, isn't it? it you know, oh, yeah. it will come back. Uh, it, well, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's how you treat other people. It's how other people absolutely. are going to treat you. It's all that vibration out there. Now, you know, you you have decided to turn the corner and completely go down a different path, but you have a criminal record. Um, I've done quite a few shows in the past of, of people that either were addicts and uh, so therefore nobody wanted to do business with them because they're you know reformed addicts and he actually started a program of anti-stigma that you cannot uh, refuse somebody work because um, you know they're clean now that they once were past an ad addict um, and, and other people who turned to violence because they were addicted to a drug that they were given because they were sick and then, you know, became so addicted to the drug, they turned to violence for it. And it's the, the reforming of yourself is one thing, but it's convincing other people that you are no longer that person and to see you as you are now. That's always a challenge for anyone in anything in life. What was that journey like to say to people that is no longer the, the Stephen that I am today? Uh, this is a very and very important aspect of this of this uh, of this journey of my journey, and um, very 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 difficult, you know, for obvious reasons. And really, in a sense, you know, I've often thought of all of the story and what it is and what it's not and what people may think. I think that this is probably the most unique part mm. that makes it so. Um, Oh my God, mm -hmm. that actually to come, because that part of it, Sarah, is so hard. You're talking yes. about everyone around you programmed to a certain thing. I mean, you know, I was even in the papers then for the notoriety, not for what I am now as, you know, right. Peace Ambassador and yes. all the wonderful stuff we do. So you're talking a complete metamorphosis and 360. Mm -hmm. But you know what I learned within that within that vacuum in the middle is, is look, again, it's learning. Mm -hmm. And the trick is to, look, all we have is our response. It doesn't matter what people call us or even what they think pretty okay. much. Our response to it is absolutely key. And again, you know, the crux of that is learning. Because, yeah, it was tough and, yeah, there was moments and, you know, I mean, you really go through the melee with that yes. and you go through it for a long time because, you know, them wounds, it takes years to heal. We're yeah. not talking a couple of months here or anything like that. Yeah. We're talking, I mean, I have 12 years, 12 years work behind me now and to narrow it, you know, I, you know, I certainly had to have about a good four or five behind me before anyone would take any kind of notice yes. of there's a real depth here of a, a real meaningful change, yes. even though that's a long time. And I knew I had, I'd started evolving long before that within the first two years. I mean, I kind of knew within the first th 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 that that was that, you know, this is it. And now we we're, we're not going back there. Right. Now there's only yep. this way. Only forward. Yes. Yeah. But you know, the outside, you know, the, but, there's an interesting part of this, you know, I'd like to say, you know, and I always say this to people because this was one of the main reasons I get so many people that reach out who are in a dark place and get so inspired by my living history and the proof. And that really makes my heart smile. It really does the most because that was my thing to, to improve hundreds of millions of people's lives. Mm -hmm. worldwide at the start of my journey Sarah I didn't even know what that would look like or what kind of a person I would need to right. but more was revealed on the journey really and we're getting close to to actually doing that right mm -hmm. you know you know you know we're in some way that's an unbelievable legacy of privilege but what I'd like to say to them people who are struggling with the change and and all of the stuff that they're in the transition of change you know, they're coming out to become the butterfly they was always meant to be, mm -hmm. is that, look, you know, I realise that, look, everyone has hard times and everyone is pushed and pulled. 
But when you think of anyone who has ever done anything in this life, of any renown, of any, of any, uh, of any goodness, of any lasting that was really worth anything, and it doesn't have to be on a global scale. Right. It can be within a family unit. Yes. They was they was put down. They was ridiculed. That you know they was laughed at. They was uh all, you know they were sent away. They was you know that you know they was lied they was cheated at they you know maybe even had abuse and all kinds of thing things everyone has been through this this is a real part of the intrinsic humanness that forges us there's certainly a lot of humility wrapped up in yeah that and this is a a tenant of where we need to be going as people so this is what i found yeah most certainly um the best teachers are those that have gone through it, right? Absolutely. You know, uh, you are going to have more effect standing up in front of a bunch of kids, telling them your story of where you were, the fear that you lived in, because you're constantly in fear. You, you know, the, there's the adrenaline, but there's also the fear that um, never knowing if you're going to get caught, as you said, the suspicion, who do you trust? Uh, your tenors up all the time. Is this a trap? How can you live like that for any length of time, you know, without something going, without something snapping? For you to stand up you know, in front of people and say, this was my life. And pretty well, it sucked. And I, I made a choice. I made a choice to, to go here. This is my life now. This is what I'm accomplishing. TV and movies makes the gangster life look sexy look oh i want that's cool i want to be tough like that you know wear the big gold chains as they do in north america and you know just be a part of that bad bad thing and it's fantasized it's it's glorified but the reality of it is nothing of glory whatsoever is it this 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 fictional output of this glamorized kind of gangster life is rubbish. It's exactly. ludicrous. Exactly. I mean, look, look, you know, you know, I'll really narrow it for you. They pick the best bits to sensationalize a, mm -hmm. a great journey and, and put little bits in to keep the keep the narrative going, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the reality of that <laughs> is is look, you know. Even if you, let's say, even if you become a successful career criminal, in the sense, even if you, then you have more of a, on the outside, you may have a few things, but let me tell you, you will never enjoy them. No. And everything is a face. You know, behind that face, there's a lot of paranoia, mm -hmm. you know, and what you do is you're in your own kind of bubble really and you are because human beings have to do that you know we don't like to feel bad certainly not for too long so we will tell ourselves stories that everything is okay mm -hmm. you know and this is typical of what people in that life do but they can be killed in a moment and then you know the real you know um martin luther king said it in the best way and i said this the other day on an interview that hate will never overcome hate only love can do that. 100%. So you can run with that as long as you want and you can blame everyone and yeah. do as much badness as you want, but you don't prosper from it. How yeah. can you? You never will. Even if you're that 3% that navigate that brutality, that wickedness with no friends, no, no, no peace, no sanctuary, no, no freedom really of the yeah. soul or anything else. Yeah. It's a very desperate existence, right? That, you know, and you end up with things or influence or money or power, then you're even more than a target. And then guess what happens? If you don't go insane with the paranoia yeah. and destroy even the people who did love you, the few who did love you, and you don't end up dead or in prison for the for the rest of your life, then the government, they'll usually come along at some point or someone else and take everything that you have anyway. Right, so you exactly. never give it. <laughs> yes. What kind of a deal is that, Sarah? Yeah. This yeah, is the reality of it. And the, the suspicion, I mean, you, we, we know whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's crime or whether it's corporate, uh, you know, people that, that, you know, have gathered the power, gathered the money. Now it is the complete and utter paranoia that somebody's going to come and take it. And they become really kind of slaves to the power. 
Mm. And, uh, you know, where is your freedom of free will there? You haven't got any free will. Everything is, is around, don't take my power, you know? And it's, you know, in a lot of ways, you become the victim that you victimized, right? <laughs> because you've imprisoned yourselves. Absolutely. And you know what? I now, you know, in my life, I'm, I'm privileged to see so much more. Uh, yes. When I see much, so much more, it's not hard to see that in its beautiful simplicity, of course, it would be like that. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah. This is how this would, if you, you know, the intelligent design around us, if when you get start to see so much more and you look at things in a, in a simple way, of course, they're like that. It makes all the sense in the world. You start up thinking none of this makes sense. Right. And then you need to uncode it. You go through the complexity because you yearn for simplicity. Then you start to see everything and you say, it's so simple, really. Yeah. Everyone's making it so complicated. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the title of the book is The Mon Monkey Puzzle Tree. Tree, yeah. And, and, and it's like, here. yeah, yeah, there's the book. Show it up. Okay, say something so your picture comes forward with the book. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm here. This is the this is the book, right. and um, it's a wonderful book. It's a wonderful book because it's a human story. Yes, I've been really brave with it, Sarah. You know that. Yeah, and that was my mission because I read some, you know, and uh, write it in a really, really engaging way. I mean, I I am. I am a good writer. There are wonderful reviews for this. It is um, shortlisted for the People's Book Prize. You know, mm, it's, it's yes. a finalist already in that, you know, selling out all over the world. But there's a lot of reasons, you know, for that because it's authentic. There's yeah, a lot and, of and it, there's, an, there, there's a very Sarah. easy flow to it. It's very captiv captivating that, you know, you just, as I said, it, it's the roller coaster life on we're going on with you. And, you know, the, the, I'm a mother of three. Yes, they're all in their 30s, but, you know, they'll be my babies till the day I die, right? Or till the day they die. The Absolutely. thing about it is I just wanted to reach out and give you a hug and say it's okay. Because I kept feeling that all you needed was somebody's arms around you to say you belong. It's okay. And, and I felt that that wasn't happening to you. So as I'm reading and your choices to do this and choices to do that, where you felt that your heart was wanting to take you one way, but you know the, the expectations of society around you took you down another way. And so, you know, as here's the hug, okay? It's the hug oh. for that little boy inside of you. <laughs> look, look, you know what, thank you. And um, I, you know, I really sat down and um, it was, it was to the authenticity of the story and to structure it in a really professional way that I mm -hmm. could get the message across. It's really as simple as that. Yes. I knew this was going to be a film at that point anyway. Oh, yeah, you, you can see, only... as you read it, you can see the visuals of it, most certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and I had to I had to write it in that cinematic yes. way. That's why. Mm. And I jump in certain way. You know, I had to think of all of these things, Sarah. But, you know, it was a lot more than that. And, um, but, yeah, it, it, it's... Um, the story is much more important than I would ever be. You know, I, I think our stories as people are really much more important than that we would ever be. I mean, we go on anyway, right? Right, exactly. But what we leave behind this trace is 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 the lasting thing, certainly. Wait, it's right? not just your story. It's your story. But it is actually telling the story of so many who will never have a voice. Absolutely. This isn't just Absolutely. you. And you know, you're the only person to have done this. Is that, uh, I mean, in the states, this was a statistics that blew my blew my mind. That seventy percent of the people incarcerated were foster children. Now, yeah. what does that tell you? That tells you that they weren't being nurtured, they weren't being guided, they weren't being loved. That that road of crime was just waiting for them, waiting for them. And the, the system is wrong, you know, and I love the fact that you've opened up this foundation because this is something very near and dear to my heart of, you know, with the Forgotten Children series of, you know, of if we do not 
and look after our children as they grow and try and keep the families together. It's not about taking the children away and giving them to someone else. It's about helping the families, maybe through addiction, uh, through sickness, uh, through abandonment, um, through, you know, through poverty. How about we invest in the, the families, you know, the, the village raising the children instead of neglecting and we would start seeing so much more of our children and the gifts that they were given of what they were here to do uh, and the abilities that they have just look at us, some of our young ones today like Greta and a few others the talents and the the articulation and the common sense and the brilliance that they have and that's because a parent behind them nurtured them and allowed them to be imagine if we did that with our children what a society we would have Right. Look, you are you are so right. And you know, I was just when I was listening to you there, I I, I just thought that how I know how the world is really structured now and all this stuff that 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 you know we are so good at so much, you know, but how that how, so so creative, so innovative, so intelligent at so much, but there are other parts of this world the way it's structured especially regarding to resources mm. and power mm -hmm. and influence where there's no other way to say it. It is structured against yes. so much stuff that could be so much better. Yes. I mean, look, you know, you, you have the children or, who, who are grown up, uh, have to grow up in poverty or war zones or single parents because of whatever dynamic and problems the pandemics they had right to, now, you right? Know, they had to deal with. Mm -hmm. When you fuse consistency to anything, yes. this is the absolute igniting of yep. all behaviours. Yeah. You know, we are pattern programmed people. Mm. So it's not hard to see whether a certain amount of years, at a certain amount of time, with a certain amount of influence, it's like A, B and C, add that and you get D. Yeah. I mean, it's really, and look, you know, bringing up children, I have three. I have an older one who's 28 and I have, you know, some younger ones there, 10, uh, uh, 11. It's the hardest job in the world. It's the it most is. difficult. It's it the is. most rewarding. Yes. But that is really something, you know, and I've always, always admired, I mean, Daphne, all her children, they all, they all went to university. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect, but they are wonderful children. They're healthy. They make good choices. They have good lives. They have good futures. They all went to university. They have that. The world is their oyster as yeah. they keep learning, right? You know, and I've come to admire that so much because there's so much giving and 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 learning for everyone and consistently over such an immense period i mean you know her daughters are like yours you know they're 30 now and they still need a lot of um mommy oh, yeah. time everybody I, you know, always needs you know, the wisdom it doesn't matter of mommy. yeah what do i actually do here i yeah. know it all and i tell everyone i know it all but what do i actually do here mm -hmm. you know what is the right answer right yeah you know that is a that is a wonderful thing but when you do, don't have that when you just for whatever reason you don't have these influences this is this is very very unfortunate and this is like for me having having had to solve these problems and go through so much hard stuff you know on my journey and the other people around me you know they're wonderful souls this is a big reason why what we want to go on to do and what what, yeah. what we think is of real value is 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 the foundation and the engagements and the and the headway that we can certainly force yes in these in these root areas and causes oh. the thing is we know what the problem is but we have been just waiting for governments to to step up and what i think one thing this pandemic has done is is and also really the political unrest that's going on around the world is that stop waiting for someone else to do it uh, you know be a contributor how can you make a difference I, I don't care if it's an inch or a yard just step forth and contribute in some way you know be a voice uh, be a support you know be a donator whatever the case is whatever way you can you know, I'm only one person, I can't make a difference. How many grains of sand make a beach? 
Right. We are all a grain of sand that's making that beach. Let's make it a beautiful beach, plastic free. <laughs> right? Let's step up together and each contribute. There isn't a competition here. This is a collaboration. This is a, a compassion, cohesiveness of coming together to make a difference in the lives of others. And when you step into that service, that's when you truly actually understand what life is all about, isn't it? Everything that you've learned, everything that you've been through, you don't want to see another child go through that. You don't want to see these people just grow up to go into gangster world and die or end up imprisoned. What a waste of life. Imagine capturing them before they make that decision and investing them into a different direction of what they could be. Imagine if someone had done that for you. Your journey was destined to be what it was because now with the book, with the movie, you are now to show people it ain't glamorous, folks. It ain't glamorous. It's terrifying. It's fearful. It's going nowhere. It's achieving it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I... I, I do believe that now, Sarah. It mm. took me a while, you know, to really get that, but more more is revealed. It, yes. You know, it really is. Yes. And and then I look back and I can remember being in the deepest, darkest dungeon, really at, you know, the lowest primitive vibration and form of misery, really, that I could have been in many times. And at that moment, I'd get a little sensing voice that would say, you have to go through this. I used to even speak to it. I'd say, why would I have to go through this living yes. hell? But it wouldn't answer the questions, of course. Right. It would just say you have to go through this. But the, the, now, the optimal back, word is through it. Through it. Yeah, through That's this. the only way you can get to the other side is through it. Not avoid it. Not, <laughs> you know, pay someone else to do it. Going through it. Yeah, it's, yes. a, it's a journey. And you know yes. what? Uh, another thing that's really important, you know, and there are many profound experiences I still get them, but they're in a different way. But um, one of the things here, the paradoxes, which I find is, is is really fascinating as well, is everyone wants to just say, turn up and say, hi, I'm here, and everyone falls down random. You know, they don't. You know, they don't want to give anything. Right. They don't want to invest anything. They don't want to, uh, you know, even learn how to have silence and listen to someone who's gone before them yeah. to impart gifts to them. They even find this difficult, really. You know, all this. But the real, the real fascinating part here is, is that all these different journeys of the lives that are negative that we're talking about, when you actually elevate, it doesn't really matter how you get there. This is the truth because we all have a. There, you know, there are many zigzags in these oh, journeys yeah. anyway. But when we get there and we elevate to that point of actually getting the look, I'm not the center of the universe. I'm actually a conduit. This yes. is a collective. Yes. And pretty much everything that I've told needs to be engineered back to front yeah. because it was the wrong message. Not in all cases, but it's the way the world has been propagated and structured. It is about others. It is about giving. It's not about taking as much as I can and all that. Now, it's one thing thinking this or trying to show this, but having it here yes, is a different heart. part of the journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when, you're, when you are what it says on the tin with this stuff, then, you know, it's really simple. Everyone's talking about success, but this is an absolute key to success because mm -hmm. it's about development as a human being. And when you get to these, I call them breaking points and levels, and I've had a few of them. And we're, we're, we're really hitting them now so, so expeditiously because we're living right, we're putting the right stuff out and there's no shortcuts. It right. is what it says on the yes. tin. So the universe is coded for bluffers, Sarah. Yes. It's, it's coded for shortcut merchants, mm -hmm. bluffers, people who are 75% and need another 25 and all of this, believe you me. Yeah. Everyone thinks it's not, but the wise ones know that actually it is. Yes. This is not the way this game is structured. So when you when you meet a certain level, and that to me, in my learning and my journey, is an intrinsic internal thing, which then goes outward in the right way, then you start to get all the success that you've always wanted. It's it's certainly been this way for me because then it's like it's like the test, this real test that's a very very unbelievably strict one to see, are you 
actually going to pass to the next gate or not. Right. This, yeah. Yeah, this is this is important for people to get, Sarah. Right. Because they're all said, yeah, there's all these rituals and we do them and they're healthy. But they say, you know, if you get up in the morning at four o'clock, work yourself to death and all that, then you'll be successful. Yeah, that'll get you somewhere when I mean, you'll, you know. But you'll be dead and not be you... able to enjoy it. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There are other parts to this is what I'm saying. Yeah. And they're very human and they're very practical and they're very, they're very simple, but it is about giving and it is about creating and it's not about taking and it's not about destroying. Without these, yeah. you don't, it's like making a cake, isn't it? Yeah. You can have a cake that's, that's all right, that cake. You can have a cake that, wow, that's, that's quite a cake. Or you can have a, have you tasted that cake? You yes. You have to go down there yeah. and taste that cake. It's the ingredients, isn't it, Sarah? Yeah. You talked about shortcuts. And, you know, I, I refer to it kind of the, the either the Amazon delivery or, you know, the downloadable app. And, you know, everybody's kind of looking for a shortcut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do I get there? Well, you have to be willing to go through the experience in, in life, the lessons that you learn from those experiences. You have to be in your own self-discovery to learn to live from the inside out. What is your gift? How do you use it? Who benefits from it? How do you share it? This is all what we're here to do. And if you're not willing to participate or be responsible for your own life, then you have to, you, whatever happens to you, is your choice because you abstained from making the right choices. You're just so very wise. You've read the same book that I have. But <laughs> no, but probably wrote them. You know, <laughs> no, but you're a very wise person, you know, a very experienced, enlightened, uh, developed person. I know that anyway, Sarah. You know, obviously the the uh, people who know you and the listeners will know this. And but you know, for me, for me, I go on about this stuff because mm -hmm. it's the truth. And I, you've you lived know, it. I mean, you are it. You, you know, everything you're you're talking about and that you're sharing, is every step you've taken, right? Yeah, and it's it's important because if you look at the extremities of it, I come from the darkest place yeah. with the darkest things thrown at me for yeah. thirty years plus, but but which people don't come back from, right? right. But found the courage the, and navigated through that to get to a complete different reality and, you know, extreme to the sense two complete polar opposites in one lifetime. How is this possible? This, well, I, these I, are the questions what, what make it unique and make it something to, to, to have a look at because yes. there is so much in there. And, you know, as I say, the, there are so much bits of us scattered in all of it. Oh. Pretty much as well in the challenges. Yeah. In the in the having to scale unscalable mountains, Sarah, right. and find ways, you know, to navigate that, but to find our way back to ourselves and to keep That's, doing that. Many yes. respects. Yes. Is, 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 and the thing it's, is, this book isn't about. just for, for, you know, potential criminals or people who are like to enter the criminal world. This is, it doesn't matter whether you're a criminal or not. What it is, is that these were the choices that were not made, bad, not good choices, but they were made based on what you knew and what was around you at the time. We can relate to that because who of us hasn't made a choice somewhere along, along the line that was due to the circumstances, with the knowledge you knew at the time, you made that choice and it ended up being disastrous. And whatever scale, whether it's a small scale or a large scale, it was still disastrous that had an effect on your life. So when you're reading your, uh, your book, you know, not only is it, you know, as I said, my heart kept going out to you and I wanted to hug the little boy, but oh, it, it explained yeah. to me, you know, the, why you made the choices you made because of the situations and the areas that you were in and makes us look at our own lives and go, okay, you know, I may not have taken that road. But boy, have I made some mistakes along the line. Am I going to beat myself up about it? Am I going to persecute myself for it? No, I'm going to learn from it and go, I know better now. Now is the time to make better choices. Right. And we do that based on knowledge. And your book is knowledge of the most tumultuous you know, upbringing and life before you've changed. It says, I have not finished the book yet. I'm about halfway through. And... Um, 
and and it's the courage to say no more of this the courage to say i'm tired of being this i'm empty this is not feeding me this there's no love here i'm afraid all the time i want to say goodbye to that there has to be a way forward in another direction and that willingness to want to take another journey forward the willingness to walk away however hard it is that courage right there is is an inspiration for people who are facing whatever they're facing in their life not knowing how to walk forward first you've got to have the desire to say no more i don't want this anymore yeah it, it's um it's a very human story you know this is another point that is that is important because whether it's a bad relationship or bankruptcy or whatever you know a bad choice in jobs a, mm. a, you know a bad bad time of unemployment yes whatever you bad know choice in marriage or boyfriend or girlfriend what, yeah. yeah it's so so it's so so relevant because yeah you know it may be on a a different scale some of this stuff but you talk to two people who's coming out of a really difficult marriage you yes. know and ask them how do they feel about it exactly. is, it, is it very serious yeah. for their experience or is it a flash in the pan right. you know you're going to get some very very choice words it's just how but just how emotionally painful this yeah. stuff is whatever it is you know whatever it is it's it is a test it's sent to try us and we are accountable for our actions, but you know the, the 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 whole essence of this is that we are human enough and aligned enough to what we need to be to learn these lessons. Because guess what? And when we learn them up to a sufficient level, guess what? We don't repeat them in the same right. way. I promise you. Yes. Try it. Yes. This is this is the knowledge that I use, and I know that this is a progressive journey. It can be expeditious for those who want to expedite it. But there are certain ways that that, that we have to be, do you know? Yes. And this is part of, I, the story was important. Of course it was. And the authenticity, this is where the energy of the truth yes. relates with power. But it was a lot more than that. I, you know, I wanted to equate very clearly the junctions and the solutions and the feelings, you know, and I have a very, a very emotive pictorial style, which you will see no doubt, Sarah, that anchors the reader right into the scene. Yes. So they're yes. like, you know, this is part of the law. Wow. You know, I see that. I smell that. I get that. My God, this is part of the, the, of the influence. The tension. Of yes. The yes. Yeah. No, but I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. Because yeah. you're bringing the emotions out in the people. You want them to feel this because if they don't feel it, they're not going to get the message from it. Absolutely. You know, and it was about the lessons. Yeah. It's great to tell the story. It's very relevant, but you know, Give us the options and the opportunities. Show us the solutions. Give us some of the real kind of esoteric information of, of, of what that means to me, of how, you know, I can not go there. Or if I do go there, why it's not a good idea to go there and what <laughs> I need to do to avoid that. Right. And also a question, if you are craving <clears throat> kind of that kind of world, what is lacking within yourself? that makes you want to go down that road. But there's always something within ourselves that is lacking and it's coming from something that was not given to us as children uh, along the line. Well, be the parent to your own soul, right? Be the parent to your own heart, nurture your own self. And, and you will then draw to you someone like Daphne in your life who will then love yeah. you unconditionally for who you are today. Absolutely. She, um, <laughs> I don't deserve her really. You know, this is the, you know, you do say this because I'm very, you know, not, and I'm always saying this, you know, they give me and they say, oh, this and what you're doing is us. Yeah, that's fine. I'm a very grounded person. But, you know, I always say she's a lot more wonderful than I would ever be, really. And there's so many people, some of the people in the foundation that we meet and we're happy to, you know, God, there's one girl there who, we, you know, she's lost both her legs to meningitis and her fingers. She's 22. Oh. She's in uni, uh, starting to be a doctor. She wants to be a surgeon. 
So we're trying, I mean, that's an unbelievable story. Yeah. You know, these people are much more wonderful on the journey that, you know, than I would ever be. I mean, who am I? I'm just, you know, I'm kind of a real warrior for this stuff, Sarah, if it makes mm -hmm. it, you know, I have a different role here now that's kind of forged in a certain way. And I feel the real incumbent responsibility of that. But that's such a joy from where, from yes. where I come from. So I keep it very simple. I, you know, you know, I keep it very simple. I work immensely hard. I mean, I love to. It's not, it's mm. not a jaw, you know. And I have wonderful people in my life. So, so these are the, you know, these are the things that that they um make me immensely, immensely happy. And you know what? I I, I can, I I can be, I can be happy and proud of the person I am today, which is the whole world to me. Um, yes. I, yes. I mean, that's what you were looking for, for all time. along. You know? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so when people ask me what's the best thing, it's not what they think. I mean, the wise people, they get it, you know, like you. But these are the these are the these are the valuable things to me. Because these are the things I never really had. I really had to blood and guts for, and I value the most, which are the real simple, normal things that probably many other people take for granted. I don't know. But to really, to really have them is is um i certainly value it which is why i i uh, i keep it very simple you know i just i always make sure i do the next right thing knowing mm. that that's what i need to be doing when it comes from your heart the thing is is that we say to people you in your self-discovery is is of your own self-love and that comes into that meaningful purpose what are you here for? Every single one of us is given a gift of an instrument. Learn to play that instrument to bring it to the orchestra of life. And that orchestra will create a symphony that will envelop other people in hope. We've all got something to contribute. Even as a criminal, you were contributing, even if it was just the lesson that you had to learn to pass on to others now, the strength the tenacity, the, the steadfastness to who you are today and not going backwards, not being tempted by the past. And also the humbleness of looking at somebody else and what they're going through and saying it's so much worse. We can't measure the pain, right? Because the pain we're feeling is the pain we're feeling. It's a scale of a 10 or 100, whatever it is, we're feeling. That's personal to us, never should be diminished. But when we look at the challenges that other people have, you've got your whole body. This young lady, fingers and legs lost and she wanted to be a surgeon. That's her redirect in life. What else can she do now in a different, in a different path? Don't look at what happens to us as the be all and the end all and to close the doors and as I say, oh, you're a write off. Nobody is a write off. If they're willing to step up and say, Enough is enough. I wish to change. I'm on that journey of self-love and meaningful purpose. But we have to make that choice. No one can make it for us. We can inspire the inspiration for invitation. We can plant the seeds. We can water them. But only the individual can choose to step up to say, I am now ready to walk in a different direction. And you chose that. And now you're being that light and that inspiration for others to show people that no matter where you come from, no matter what you've had to face, you can end up going in a totally different direction that is meaningful, that is purposeful, that is giving, and that is loving. And ultimately, isn't that what we want to be known for as loving givers? Absolutely. And, um, you know, the world is going through a another transition of, of mm -hmm. uh, unprecedented changes. It, yes. We know this, right? Now, there's a lot to this, as we know, but to keep it simple again, and um, we are in, I mean, the world has its cycles. Life is cycles, just like the world yes. is going through. It's, it's all going through the cycles, right? And, um, but this is a, it is a special time because of the expeditious nature of where the species is going and, yes. and, and, and the enlightenment and the, you know, the knowledge, the access to knowledge and other esoteric knowledge that there, so there are opportunities there certainly oh. for human beings to yes. see to so rise up, to grow. Yeah. That mm -hmm. were not there before. No. I mean, this is, yes. this is one of the main reasons why it's special because the real tools are there for those who, who who want to feel and see and make use of 
what their real purpose find find out what that is and look you know when we find it we know what it is right? oh, yeah. we don't need someone to yeah. tell us so you get to that point and you know there are many like-minded people uh, in the world today so it's a very very interesting interesting time and an interesting interesting time you know to live and be part of the human race uh, you know and all of that all of that stuff that comes with that really it is yeah, um, I, I totally agree. You know, it's um, the universe has shaken us up to wake us up for us to step up and change it up. And we are the change we seek. And uh, you, you by taking a different direction and now having this foundation that is helping others, you know, that was the, you stood up and you changed. And now that change is going to have a wonderful positive ripple effect on other people's lives. And would you have done it? Had you taken a different path? Who knows? But you understand the challenges and the difficulties these people are going through. So you know how to be there for them. And, and you do this yeah. with Daphne, right? Yeah, with, you know, with our work and uh, over the years, uh, building our work and the things we've had to learn and do and you know, the people we've had to become with, you know, we've met many, many people. We have a lawyer, a lawyer friend of mine. He's a senior lawyer. He's the other, the other, uh, the other trustee. But look, you know, I mean, I had uh, people there that I've that I've worked with. There was, uh, you know, the most senior ex-gold police police commander in the UK. You know, I've done much work with him, Cole May. He wanted to come on board. You know, uh, uh, a top surgeon, surgeon general, was going to come on board. Um, <laughs> I can go on and on, really. You know, I I really can. You know, there are politicians. I'm one of really, really high level politicians and people like that. I mean, this is amazing as well. Where you think of where I where I come from, right? Not to not 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 that not that I would be special. Why would I be? But that anything is possible. Yes. That we can. That we can. That we can really change things. You know, and we're not. We're not chained to our past, right? No matter what that would be. This is probably the most key lesson of all of it: that we're not, we are much better than the things, or the, you know, the things that have separated us and bound us in the past. We can go a different way really quickly and really influentially, and really tip it all on its head. Yeah. You no. Know? Yes, and. Um- And it's because of the experiences that we go through, you know, negative or positive. That's how we step into gratitude, right? That's how we change our attitude. That's when we start being thankful for even the little things that we have. You know, when when we're deprived of, that's when we, you know, the taste of the ice cream tastes very, very different when it's being deprived, right? So it's, that's the thing is the appreciation. And, you know, why do we have to wait for something to happen to take everything away before we appreciate what it is in front of us? Why can we not grow up appreciating and being grateful for what we do have and not the emphasis on what we don't have? It's so true. And, you know, the simple answer is that this is part of that coding in the yeah. universe to see, are we, are we up with it yet? Or yeah. where are no, we, we with it at the moment? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> where actually are we with this at the yeah. moment? You know, are we close to it? Are we getting it or are we not yeah. anywhere getting it at all? Mm. You know, and, and this is the thing, you know, and, you know, when, when you start to see this and you start to realise how this is put together, it's um, it's not a surprise to me now, um, yeah. uh, uh, Sarah. You know, I know it's not a surprise to you now, but the when you look at the the twists and turns of the journey that it yes. that it took to evolve, when most people that I you know that, that I can see, unfortunately, because I look at the behaviours and I look at so much, and I just you know, I never say people are bad now or mm. or anything like this or good or, or any of this stuff. I just say, you know, they have some more stuff to learn. Yeah. You know, it's their development. I mean, this is it. You know, that's it. This is where I am with it now because I know how this works. Yeah. So it's never a judging thing. Well, it, it's, it's a, like it's a learning it's, development thing. Right. Yeah. You know, my kids have made choices that um, I didn't like. 
And, you know, at, at one stage in my life, you know, I actually had to say to one of my kids, I love you desperately, but I can't be around you who you are right now. And when that changes, my arms are open. And, and it was because of that, that he actually did take a different path. You know, he said that he was at that crossroads, saw my face, felt my love and said, I can't do this to my mum," and then took another road. So all we can do is, is seed, seed, seed and water that love. You know, the love of your children, you may not love what they're doing. But that doesn't mean you don't love your child. Do not turn away from your child or from the children out there. Do not judge them by the actions they're taking. They're taking them out of circumstance. Help them in that action. Or if they're unwilling to be helped, say, I love you. I'm there for you, but I can't condone the action. And then it has to be their choice, their choice to change. and Because we can't force people. And even if you incarcerate them, you can't force people to change. That has to be their free will, their choice at a certain point in their life. So true. And yeah, you know, uh, children. I've had to do the same thing, you know, myself, you know, with one of my children. Because I, you know, I just knew this, you know, that, that there I, you know, um, I, I didn't condone, you know, that way to live or that behavior. And it was very destructive. And it was certainly going to end very badly, you know. And it was not for me, you know, to just watch my baby to just do that yes. stuff, right? So, yes. so, you know, that was the thing. Having been there already, you know. To yes, very, exactly. The bars to a very high degree. I, you know, I have the, I have the variables, Right, I have the variables, the variants, right, you know, so I, um, yeah, you know, we didn't speak for a couple of years to that. But, yeah. And that was very painful, but that saved us 20. Exactly, I agree with you. That saved us it's 20 very, years. very painful. Some people, to, some people yeah. are not strong like that, Sarah. No, I know. Bless them. Yeah, Bless I know. Them. I get it. I mean, I'm no, you know, you have your choices, but, you know, this is what I saw as yeah. something I kind of had to do to save more later on right yeah and, uh, and and you know like that. every child is going to test their limits you know test their own boundaries explore things and and sometimes they may jump into a pond that they you know on the surface look like one thing and then they realize there's piranhas in there and you know sometimes they do need that help to be pulled out of a pond because they're sinking but other times they've just got to learn to swim and get to shore and that's their lesson to learn and however painful it is for a parent as again just I love you I love you I love you and I hope that you make better choices and um, but that's up to them right that's up to them absolutely so um I know you're an entrepreneur as well and this obviously is going to be made into a movie with the pandemic I assume that that's going to be held off a little while before they, they start making that we um, it's kind of relative in the sense. I, I we we believe the timing is going to work for us. I mean, yes. we have to adapt, right? Yes, exactly. But we've got the script. You know, I've got the script over there. I'm in fact, I've got three hour meeting tomorrow with the, with the senior producer on the script, and then we've got another three hours on Friday with the screenwriter, everyone involved again mm -hmm. with the script. You know, this gets really technical, the analysis of it and all that, and. Um, but it's it's going very very well, you know, and we're already into into casting and um, look at, looking at the budget top sheet and already engaging with with investors. But um, so there's there's pre production that needs yes. to be done anyway. Yeah. People so think a movie just time, turns yeah. up, you know, and it yeah. takes a couple of years before anything is. Well, done. absolutely, yeah. you know, yeah. this is this is a big budget movie as well. You know, there's now, a lot who's of, going lot of to play you? Oh, this is the uh, <laughs> big question. There's been a lot of names, uh, Sarah. I've been I've been banded about real, real A-list people. Uh, because obviously you've got the young, the young, the young you, and yeah, and then the old Bale, you. Right? you know all these kind of people. There's been other names. I mean, it's interesting because everyone's agreed, especially the directors and all that, that that it's going to take someone a real talented heavyweight actor because they're going to need a real depth because of they have to play that real darkness yes but be able to transition into the light yes. a lot of actors are stereotyped they play one or the other right to, you know to be able to play that you need to be a very you know a very a very skilled actor to pull that off in the way that they're going to need to it's a lot of pressure 
So um, we are you're, talking. You're in, you're in the, the creative side of things right now, which is fun, right? You oh, know? I love it. Yeah, the, the, the seeding, the watering, you know, the nurturing of it, and then that first reading, you know, when when people get together. I mean, that's when it really starts growing. But you know, what you're doing right now is is all that beautiful creative stuff before you even get to the creative camera. <laughs> so exciting. To know what it is. I mean, I'll tell you some other stuff as well because I um, I can say a bit about it because it's relevant to whoever you are. But you know, there's a film and uh, you know, there's a book. I mean, I there will be other books. There's some other books that I want to write, but I won't talk about that. But we have been, you know, we have been in um, in talks with with some TV TV mm -hmm. networks. I won't say their names, but some of them are America. And uh, we're talking very, very closely to people in Canada. Mm. I won't say their names. And we have been now for a couple of months, but we're getting the format right. And what we want to do is a six-part a six part TV series. Right. Which will yes. be shown all over North, North America. So in the new year. So this may very, very well, we're very close to signing. Excellent. We've been working Fingers on the crossed. format to get it right, <laughs> but it's non-scripted, factual, where I'll have to come over to you guys and film it. No. Oh. Well, stuff. if it's in Canada on the West Coast, I'd love to meet you. <laughs> Canada, Canada have really got themselves sorted out when it comes to production and oh, yes, uh, yes. Tax, uh, yes. tax credits and filming. It's the place to be if oh, you're yeah. filming it there. They really, they, you know, they really have a wonderful model. So this is one of the things that's very good, you know, for the work. And um, that's very good. Yeah. I can't say anything else. They'll, they'll well, strangle. When it, when it gets closer it'll to that, you'll really, have to come really back and share all of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I won't. But there's something, you know, because it's closer to home. And um, uh, Daphne's, Daphne's certainly been to Canada. She's been there with yes. you. Are. Yes. She says, absolutely. It's a wonderful time. place. It really is. The, 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 yeah. I'm a West Coaster. It's, awesome. it's a wonderful place. Yeah. I have people there, you know. Uh, you know, I know I know some people there in the in the self development um, industry. Uh, so I will be coming at some point <laughs> over Excellent. there. It's a beautiful country, and I I look forward to coming over there. I no. really do. Hopefully, yep. hopefully this 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 global um, pandemic is yeah. Pandemic you know, I don't think we're going to be looking at any travel until at least mid you know next summer. So yeah, you know, right now, you know, right now is the creative juices, is the is the building of everything on the back end, so that when you get the green light, then you can really put the foot to the pedal, right? It is. It's a lot of work. It's a yeah. lot of work at the moment. And uh, look, it's nice. It's really nice because we, you know, we do that anyway. We tend to, oh, you know, we're work for three months solid. You yes. know, really, really all out, and and then kind of have a you know a weekend or a. Or a few days or something and then do it all over again but you know we've got christmas coming yes so you know we've got some time for the children and normal stuff there so you know i'm really looking forward to having some time there that's that's what i'm looking forward to now as well well i'm you know i'm very thankful that you have shared your journey as i said i've i've interviewed other people in the past that had the courage to say you know, I was a drug addict or I went into selling drugs because I was a drug addict or and, and the things that they're doing now because of that journey are exemplary. And you're 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 the same there with the journey that you've taken, the fact that you're sharing it, it will deter other people getting into it, hopefully. Um, most certainly it brings light to the fact that if we don't nurture and invest our children when they're young, you expect them to go down a path that is wrong because they're just not getting it, you know, and that's really huge. And I invite you to come and write a chapter in my Forgotten Children series book, because I think that um, most certainly contribution on, on being raised in so many different homes, it really, this is something we have to bring awareness to, you know, stop incarcerating them, stop throwing them away in the adults, stop looking at them and saying, oh, they're bad stuff. How about right from the word go, nurturing them and their families and helping them grow up to be strong, uh, to be all that they're meant to be and stop trying to band-aid things later. Let's get to the seed and the root of the problem and fix that because that's important. So how do people find your foundation and, and any other contact that you'd like people to have and where um, do they buy the book? The book is there, you know, you can get it 
absolutely everywhere. It's in, you know, it's in Walmart in the States. It's on Amazon. It's really easy to get it there. You know, your Waterstones, all these other places. It's, you know, it's absolutely everywhere online. Uh, I suppose the easiest thing for people to do is Google me. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Stephen with the P-H Gillen, G-I-L-L-E-N, um, uh, England. You know, I suppose if it's over there, they're different. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you can get me at the website, which is www. Stephen with the P-H Gillen, G-I-L-L-E-N dot com. There's so many ways that, that, you know, there's many articles in there. There's mm-hmm. uh, many ways to get a hold of us. We do, you know, we're doing a lot of different stuff. So it's really, really easy to go there, really. And there's loads of articles. There's loads of ways to see the current work we're doing, videos, lots of free content, um, current stuff, ways to ways to get a hold of us and reach out. And, of course, even with the book, you know, there's, you know, there's ways in there to, you know, to get a hold of us and the foundation and some about the work and stuff like that. So, you know, if people want to get a hold of us and, you know, we always welcome, yeah. we work and we talk to people all over the world constantly. We really do. Mm. It is about getting, getting them good people. And we're very, we're very open to collaborate the right, you know, the right collaborations, you know, and all of this stuff we really are. So, yeah. Yeah, I've got a few people to introduce you to, that's for sure. So it's stephengillen.com. It's also Stephen Gillen on Facebook and on Instagram. It is, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all there as well, the social media stuff. It's quite easy. Well, thank you so much. And I look forward to talking to Daphne and having her on as well. And, uh, you know, thank you for your courage. You know, thank you. There's so many people like they're embarrassed by their past. I don't want anyone to know. And then, you know, somebody comes along, finds out about their past and blackmails them, you know, or makes them feel small. And I think owning who you are. Yes, my past is not rosy. Yes, I made mistakes, uh, but I'm no longer that person. I've learned those lessons. And because of that lesson, this is what I'm doing today. And it takes so much more strength and courage to stand up and say, I love who I am today because of who I was yesterday. So thank you so much for doing that. Thanks. Thanks for having me, um, Sarah. You know, the wonderful, wise person that you are and you know i'll be happy to do a chapter in the book for the child you know i know i know you know i know that would uh, add value somewhere you know yeah, definitely. thank you thank you for having me on the show i'm you know i'll come back another time and you know you'll absolutely love love daphne and a lot of i know, lot of I know. Stuff she has to say i'm sure <laughs> Yes, most certainly. So thank you very much. It's the monkey puzzle tree. Uh, you can find it um, on Amazon or you can obviously get a lead from it from the site, stephengillen.com. Um, it's a very easy read. It's very easy to get to just to, to get, you know, to get caught up in it and, uh, and just go with the flow. It's very much a flow book. Absolutely. And, you know, you look at what he's been through, you look at, you um, what he's done and you know we know how easy it is to get traumatized over something very small and yet you you lived in that life for so long and uh, you know had such an effect and I kept going to you know he's not eating properly you know, a true mother came out reading this book <laughs> and but you know how can you eat when your body's tense all the time so yes you know, there's so many things to learn here it's a it's a definitely even if you're raising children that are suddenly looking at that life and thinking it's glamorous. It's a good book to hand your teenagers and uh, read it with them Absolutely. and have a conversation because you think this is all glory. Take a look at this. That and come back and see if you feel the same. I'm very yeah. happy to answer any questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Wonderful. Really well, thank you so much, Stephen. God bless you. And uh, until next time, folks, bye yeah. for now. Bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to bringing you more shows. Please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see the incredible lineup of genres and shows that we have for you. We are here to make a difference in your life. Thank you for listening.